Okay, lesson 85 of Course in Miracles, review section <clears throat> number 69. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. Yeah. So my grievances show me what is not there and hide from me what I would see. So my grievances show me what is not there. So when I'm holding a grievances, I, I'm seeing perception. I'm not actually seeing the truth. I'm not seeing with vision. So grievances, to identify with a grievance, which is usually to identify with a thought or an image, then if that was the only thing that one identified with, then immediately it would create a sense of separation and fear. And, um, and it would also... <clears throat> provide a projected image which one the ego would would say would be reality but would just be a construct a, a perception that had been constructed by the ego so it's actually showing you what is not there or it's actually taking you into a lower level of consciousness whereby you're sort of seeing people as bad or you're see or you're seeing that not only are you seeing people bad, but you're seeing that such a thing as separation exists, like there's an individual you judging another individual separate other. And none of that exists in truth. <clears throat> so, recognizing this, what do I want my grievances for? They keep me in darkness and hide the light. So, the more you hold grievances, the more into darkness you go. As these thoughts perpetuate, and as you identify and hook into them, then it seems like the world becomes darker and darker, and you start to get feelings like wanting to kill people, or scared of people, or going into fear. So all of these things, and it stops one being in the limitless light, or the oneness, or beyond separation and all fear. So grievances and light um, cannot go together. So this is quite a, quite a non-dualistic approach to it. So if you're holding on to any grievances, you cannot be in the true light. Um, and they will cast you into... To have a grievance anyway, you have to be dualistic. Because only the ego can hold a grievance. I mean, the light can't hold a grievance. I mean, it's like oneness, or the non-dual state, or being in infinite peace. You know, it's, it's ridiculous to say that holds a grievance. So it's only when you get a sense of a separation that even grievances can exist. And then, as soon as grievances exist, you're cut off from the absolute light or that, that, uh, the non-dual oneness. <clears throat> so, but light and vision must be joined for me to see. To see, I must lay grievances aside. I want to see, and this will be the means by which I will succeed. <clears throat> so in, it says, to see, I must lay grievances aside. And I, I'm, in terms of how you do that, I love self-inquiry. So if there's a grievance, let's say I'm angry at my neighbour, then how do I lay my grievance aside? Well, one way, apart from using the course lessons, is to be aware of the grievance and ask what's observing the grievance. And is the observer of the grievance holding a grievance? And if the observer of the grievance is holding a grievance, then what's observing that observer which has a grievance? Eventually you'll find that the observer, the pure observer, doesn't hold any grievances uh, and is actually beyond duality. <clears throat> so specific applications for this idea might be made in these forms. <clears throat> let, me, let me not use this as a block to sight. <clears throat> so let me not use my... Well actually I've got a, I'll, I'll, I'll give a practical example and sneak in some of my own ones at the same time. So let me not use this uh, grievance against the insurance company as a block to sight, or whatever it is that you're holding grievance or The light of the world will shine all this grievance away that I'm holding on the insurance company, or I have no need for this. I want to see. So these are all ways of practical application. Uh, against, uh, and they can all be used practically to, to shed any grievance. Okay, the next, um, the next um, uh, summary is for Lesson 70. 
My salvation comes from me. So today I'll recognize where my salvation is. It is in me because its source is there. So salvation is in me. And, and again, um, going back to self-inquiry, remember that St. Francis said, which is exactly what all, all teachers of enlightenment say. St. Francis said, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. What you're looking for is where you're looking from. So here it says, you know, today I'll recognize where salvation is. It is in me. So, and St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. And uh, one of my teachers of enlightenment, Muji, says, you know, what's observing, what's observing what, what your current conception of what you think you are is. So they're all saying the same thing. You know, or, the, or, or another one would be the kingdom of heaven is within. You see, so, um, so if I have a sense of separated self, if I, have a, if I think I'm my body or my thoughts, then that's not me, because I'm f re the true me is further in th than that. It's within that. <clears throat> I can find the light within me, because the me is not real. So, and then I can gain access to the light. Or, that which observes what I think I am is where I'll find the light and salvation. <clears throat> and what I've been looking for, because what I've been, because the Course or St. Francis is talking to everyone who's experiencing separation and individuality. But where, you know, as St. Francis says, it's in dying one is born to eternal life. So in the death of the idea of a separate self, then one recognizes inside, in the observing field, within, there is the infinite light. The infinite non-dual realm lies within. So hence, you know, even though ultimately, um, when the ego is dissolved, it's not inside or outside, upside or downside, but when you're an ego, you look within. You don't look to objects to try and find salvation. So it has not left its source, and so it cannot have left my mind. I will not look for it outside myself. I really like this. Do not, and in the Course really ratifies this, you know, like salvation is not going to be found outside of yourself. You know, hence I sort of see it as a mystical teaching. You know, do not look for salvation in anything outside of yourself. You know, and it calls the, 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 either the false gods or something like that. You know, and that, coming from an addiction background, I thought, you know, salvation is going to be found in food, in sugar, in donuts, in a thin body, in exercising. I thought it would be found in a girlfriend. I thought it would be found in success and career and money. So, you know, if I look for it in these things, you know, the Course is saying it's not going to be found in these things. You're not going to get salvation, find salvation in a donut even though that's what, you know, unconsciously that's what I was going to because I was feeling this deep spiritual unrest and I'd keep eating sugary food. So my actions were to find, even though I wasn't conscious, I was trying to find salvation in sugar or I was trying to find salvation in the opposite sex or I was trying to find salvation in uh, success. So <clears throat> says, do not look for it in there. It is not found outside and then brought in. Because, you know, that for me seems obvious. If you're like in a state of unrest or separation or fear, looking for an, an, an object, a, a God which is an object, i.e. A, a donut is an object, a girl is an object, a, um, or a career is a conceptual object. You know, it's within the concept, it's a conceptual idea. It's still an externalized object. You know, you can't you can't find it in that and then you get it because it's pride it's within that. So the, these lessons are saying, don't look outside, go inside to find to find the light. Um, but uh, in but from within me, it will reach beyond. Uh, and everything I see will but, will but reflect the light that shines in me 
and in itself. So, but, but from within me, it will reach beyond. And, you know, when I reach within, then my ego dissolves, my separated ego, my, the idea of separation dissolves, and then the light that was in, within uh, we reflect that light that shines in me and in itself. Yeah. So these forms of the of the idea are suitable for more specific applications. So these are, these are ways you can use the lesson if you're holding on to any resentment or any kind of dualistic notion or if you're worshipping sugar or donuts or whatever it is. So let this not tempt me to look away from me for my salvation. Like someone was talking a bit earlier about monks. This would be like if there was temptation in the room you have to get distracted by a member of the audience. Uh, unfortunately, the viewers won't get what the story was. But let's say there was a room full of... Someone was describing a room full of monks and there was someone there that was very distracting. Luckily, none of the, <laughs> the monks were distracted by that. But this could have been like an excellent lesson <laughs> to, to be mantraing away. Let this not tempt me to look away from me, from myself. <laughs> they could, that could be equally a good mantra to, to be saying if there was like temptations in the audience. Um, yeah, because, you know, the outside world is full of temptations, you know, to get distracted or fixated or to think that, you know, like a girl or, or a chocolate bar or whatever it is could, uh, could distract one. But actually you know, as the, this would be a thing, let me, let this not tempt me to look away from, from me. You know, look in me for salvation, do not look to any outside object. So I, I love that and that for me is why I sort of see the Course as a pathway, of, or a mystical pathway to find salvation within. So I will not let this interfere with my awareness of the source of my salvation. So let's say uh, there was a pretty girl in the, in, in the audience. I will not let this pretty girl interfere with my awareness of the source of my salvation because it was a pretty girl in the audience that the monks had. Or this has no power to remove salvation from me. That's a very power. I like that. There's a lot of power in that. You know, you see something that your ego normally gets tempted by. I can feel the power in that. So you just state, this has no power to remove salvation from me. Because salvation is the light within me. You know, the light within me. I mean, no donut, no pretty girl, no job, no amount of money can remove, has the power to remove salvation, which is in me. You know, the, the whole idea of the ego is salvation is found somewhere outside. Hence the ego can live. <laughs> 